COVID is on the rise again across America. Over the past few weeks, we've definitely seen an uptick in the numbers of COVID. New York saw a jump in weekly cases, up to 750 in August, compared to 250 the month before. It comes as health agencies try to keep track of a new, highly mutated lineage of the virus that causes COVID-19. So, should you be worried? One new variant of the disease that's raised concern among health professionals is called BA286. So far, there have been only a handful of cases. And in short, experts say it's too soon to know whether it'll cause more severe illness. Reuters spoke with Dennis Nash, professor of epidemiology at City University of New York Graduate School of Public Health. While we don't know all the details yet, what we do know do does raise the possibility that this new variant could potentially evade current immunity to increase transmission, for example. And it could also um, potentially be of higher severity than variants that we've seen lately. The Centers for Disease Control has said that the new variant could be more capable than older variants in causing infection in people who have previously had COVID-19 or who have received vaccines. In recent months, more cases have been attributed to Eris, a descendant of the Omicron lineage that originally emerged in November 2021. But doctors say patients with Eris aren't as sick as those they treated during the early days of COVID-19. Dr. Frederick Davis is the associate chair of the emergency department at Long Island Jewish Hospital. They'll come in with body aches, maybe some fevers. And, and many times we're seeing patients that didn't even know they might have had some congestion and came in for totally unrelated symptoms and are found to have COVID. According to data on the CDC website, U.S. emergency department visits and hospitalizations for COVID remain low, but have been rising since early July. We, we are watching very closely what's happening. We do expect that there will be likely an even larger surge in community transmission as we move into the fall, right? Um, the weather gets colder, kids are going back to school. Um, and, and so we, we are looking at this closely with concern. The CDC said its advice on protecting yourself from COVID remains the same. Doctors continue to suggest that vaccines are the best protection against the new variants, especially if it's been a while since you were last vaccinated but the most effective new vaccines aren't yet available. It will become available in the, in the fall. Um, I, I, I think that government should be doing everything they can to accelerate that timeline and, and get people uh, vaccinated who are not yet up to date on their, their vaccines. Can you say anything about the uptick of COVID cases and new variant? Yes, I can. Matter of fact, I signed off this morning on a proposal to present to the Congress a request for additional funding for a new vaccine that is necessary and that works. And tentatively, I've decided to find it. Tentatively, it is recommended that it will be recommended that everybody get it, no matter what they got. What I can say is that we are prepared for the fall. We believe that we're prepared for the fall. We believe that we are in a better position than we've ever been to combat COVID-19. Uh, and that's because of the work that the president has done. You heard from FDA, you heard from CD, uh, CDC, pardon me, who have said that there's going to be new vaccines that's going to be av available uh, mid-September. And look, because of the work that this administration has done with the leadership of this president, we have been able to put together a comprehensive way to deal with this pandemic, to deal with COVID-19. And we have put forth multiple tools to do that. And the vaccine clearly is one of that. As, as it relates to what the president said, I just don't have anything to add at this time. When it comes to informing the American people about these vaccines, about the different tools that this, pres that this president and this administration has put forward, we have really put informing Americans as a priority. And so we'll continue to do that. We know that uh, that uh, COVID-19 vaccinations are the safest to protect, to protection for avoiding hospitalization, long-term health outcomes and death. And that is why we are going to continue to encourage Americans to stay up to date on their vaccines. We, we believe we are in the strongest position yet 
in the strongest position yet to deal with COVID-19. As I've said multiple times, while the CDC is reporting an increase in infections and hospital uh, and hospitals, hospital admissions overall remains low. Uh, but again, we believe that we are in a good position and the strongest position that we have been uh, in the past three years or so uh, to deal uh, to deal with uh, COVID, uh, COVID-19. So this is a historical first. We have three vaccines available for the first time this fall to protect against three of the biggest respiratory illnesses. We are expecting all three of these viruses to be back this fall, with COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations already starting to increase. RSV, flu season generally start in September and can go into May. All three represent a serious risk of hospitalization, be admitted to the ICU, or even dying, especially among those with a compromised, immature, or weakened immune system. Hospitalizations for COVID-19 are already starting to increase in the U.S. Uh, in the U.S., for RSV, for example, between 58,000 and 80,000 hospitalizations among children less than five years of age and 60 to 160 hospitalizations for adults 65 years and older. When it comes to influenza, we can expect somewhere between 140,000 to 700,000 hospitalizations uh, for influenza. So, all three of these combined can put a significant stress on our healthcare system. First, get vaccinated. As I said, there are three vaccines now available for the first time in history, but you need to get vaccinated early. You need time for your body to develop the immunity to these uh, and provide the most protection possible. Second, if you are ill, stay home and contact your provider. For COVID-19 and influenza, there are treatments available and the sooner you take them, the better chance of reducing symptoms and your ability to spread the disease. Third, wash your hands. Soap and water are the best, towel drying. Uh, that's an important message throughout the season. And then finally, avoid large gatherings indoors. However, if you have to attend, we recommend wearing a mask, especially if you're in those high-risk categories.